Uh, so today uh, marks uh, day number 43 uh, since Doctors Nationwide declared incapacitation. So this is uh, this was uh, one of our many solidarity meetings we've been held in so far to keep each other strong and strengthen each other and there's a way of uh, sharing uh, information and updates and uh, also having some uh, ideas from our constituents. But the situation in our hospital is dire at the moment as there are no doctors to attend. And uh, as you can see that today's meeting, uh, there were only a few doctors uh, in attendance because the majority of them are at home. They can't even now come to these solidarity, messages, solidarity meetings because they are now grossly incapacitated. And uh, it's really unfortunate that the employer is uh, moving at a slow pace in trying to address our, our genuine pleas. You know, it's now day 43 and it's not easy. And so far we've only had um, three official meetings. The first two, the employer offering 30 and 60 percent respectively, and they ended in a stalemate. And the last meeting which we had in the presence of our acting permanent secretary for the Minister of Health and Child Care, uh, we set a benchmark to say that if the employer would at least meet this uh, benchmark, he should uh, show his uh, sincerity and uh, commitment in trying to resolve this impasse. So the message from the meeting is still share the same sentiments of uh, no money, no work, and uh, what we only need now is uh, financial capacitation. Those are fed from the Labour Court. They won't capacitate us, unfortunately. You know, even uh, the objection of our leader didn't cap capacitate us. So these are just hurdles that are coming in our way. But we are main, we remain strong and determined to overcome these hurdles until we get to 100 days incapacitation, like our colleagues in Kenya did. Uh, and on day 100, they uh, finally got what they demanded. So. It's for us, it's still day 33 and still have a long way to go until we get to 100. That's when we uh, maybe get tired and weary, but for now, we still a loot all the way until victory comes. And it's not easy, you know. So, so I, if we are not able to reach your demand by day 100, do you plan on proceeding to try to... Uh, you know, uh, imitating from the strike in Kenya, we saw the United Nations and uh, World Health Organization uh, intervening close to day 63 and like. So we know that until day 100, something will have, uh, a lot will have happened in between. So until we get to day 100, that's when we we'll start thinking of getting tired and we, but for now it's still uh, a looter all the way to 100. Are you not afraid of the implications that come with this? I mean, you mentioned uh, your fellow doctor that is recovering from South Africa. Are you guys not afraid that that again will, will come and haunt you guys? Oh, uh, if I may quote from uh, the same doctor you mentioned, Dr. Peter Magumbe, you would always say to us, at this point in time, I think hunger now threatens me more than the gun. And all. So here yeah, we simply have a doctor, doctors who are angry and uh, who are unable to go to work. You know, Zimbabwean doctors are among the selfless individuals. They, are no, they know their worth, and uh, if you compare with other doctors in the region, they are earning way, way less than below what uh, other doctors in the region are earning, even in the United States dollars equivalent. But now they are now just asking to be capacitated to go to work. That's the situation at hand. So all those uh, legalities and all, yes, they can... Uh, they can be thrown to us, all those court verdicts and uh, those legal implications you are mentioning. They will come our way, but uh, we don't have the means. Even. So whatever that comes our way, we will not capacitate us unless we get the money we uh, want. Okay, you've mentioned one issue, which that being uh, the doctor's uh, salaries. But there's one also that, that, that we've heard of from outside Zimbabwe, which is medication. Is there medication in hospitals to treat these patients if not all the doctors come back into the hospitals? Our hospitals have never had uh, enough medication and sundries to use. But uh, with the little resources that are there, we've been uh, trying our best to, to 
take care of our patients. So that issue, we said it in the beginning, that we will not deliberate on the issue of sanitation and all. Because we have seen that the employer has a tendency of focusing on the nitty gritties and uh, not focus on the big picture. But the elephant in the room at the moment is that doctors are incapacitated to go to it. They don't have the means to do so. So that's what we are focusing on at the moment. And uh, someday when we are incapacitated to go to work, we will talk of uh, medications and all. Thank you. Thank you.